The C language was created in 1972 by Ken Thompson and Dennis Ritchie at Bell Labs in New Jersey. The reason it's called C is because originally in the 60s there was a language called BCPL, standing for Basic Combined Programming Language, and then Ken Thompson took that and created a language he called B, and Dennis Ritchie helped him a bit on that, and then Dennis Ritchie took that and created what we now call C. And he called it C simply because C comes after B. The early 1970s was also the period when Bell Labs was creating the original Unix operating system. So people often associate C with Unix, but this doesn't necessarily mean that C is Unix specific. You can use C on any platform. A few popular later languages are heavily based on C. Most notably there's C++ and Objective-C, which were both created in the 1980s. Both of these languages can be summarized as pretty much C with the addition of classes for the sake of object-oriented programming. And somewhat confusingly, these languages are almost near-perfect supersets of C, meaning that they have everything of C, but just more. So you could actually write C code in C++ if you write C++ and just avoid using certain features, most namely classes. In truth, you can't actually take any C code and feed it to a C++ compiler and have it spit out a working program because, well, there are just these small little differences where the languages overlap. So at first, the C language didn't have a formal specification. There was just the compiler, and the compiler was the end authority in what it meant to be proper C code. But then other people come along and they create their own C compilers. They make a few mistakes in getting the details, or they add their own features, and the, the original implementation evolves and adds new features or drops features. Uh, people change their minds. So after about a, a decade or so, you get this fracturing problem where there's a bunch of different versions of what it means to be C. So in 1989, the standards body called ANSI, American National Standards Institute, they created the C89 specification, and then a year later they revised that and called it C90, and then they revised it one more time in 1999, which they called C99, and those specifications specify what it means to be a proper implementation of C. And these standards have been pretty successful, meaning that the major compilers have at least tried to conform to that standard, though there's always some issues in the details. And say there are some features added in C99, which not every compiler has implemented, but most of the major stuff is implemented, so you can be assured that if it works on one compiler, it's going to work on another. Over the years, there have been a number of popular C compilers, but today the two most popular are undoubtedly the GNU compiler and the Microsoft compiler. The GNU compiler is so-called because it's created by the GNU organization, which is a, a group of free software developers that started in the 1980s. And confusingly, it's called GCC, but GCC stands for either uh, GNU C compiler or GNU compiler collection. Properly speaking, the GNU compiler collection, GCC, refers to actually a whole family of compilers for various languages. There's a compiler for Pascal, for Java, for C++, Objective-C, a number of languages. The Microsoft compiler is also somewhat unclearly named. For one thing, they call it usually a C++ compiler, even though it's the same compiler you use if you want to uh, compile straight C code. You just set a flag when you run the compiler and it'll go into C mode. So GCC is obviously free because it's free open source software, but actually the Microsoft compiler is free as well, at least in the sense of monetary value. It's just a free download off of Microsoft's site. If you're on Windows, I recommend just starting out with the Microsoft Visual Studio IDE. There's an express version which is free to download, and that way you can just write your code and compile it and run it without having to worry about the command line at first. On other platforms, you should just use GCC. On Windows, you can use GCC, but because of its uh, kind of Unix bias, it, it works a bit awkwardly on Windows. You have to uh, get this thing called MiniGW or SIGWIN to get uh, GCC to run on Windows. In any case, we won't really cover the details of the compilation process until after we've covered the language.